you can tell when your car battery's dying. But with your water heater, you'll never know until it starts leaking. Before you buy another tank, consider a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to heat or leak. Lower energy bills and endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian's strong warranty. If your water heater is over 8 years old, it's time to check out Navian at tanklessmadesimple.com. Get Macy's lowest prices of the season on great fall specials like glamorous diamond pendants and earrings to complete any look. Now 60% off. And get ready for cooler nights ahead with 65% off Charter Club damask sheets and bedding. Now at Macy's. Plus get your Macy's order faster when you pick up curbside or in store. Or try same day delivery powered by DoorDash. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. All right, so Dancing with the Stars, uh, I guess the new season started last <laughs> night. And Carol the most we've talked about this show ever. Yeah. Twice today. Twice. Yeah, that's yeah. A, you're absolutely right. Uh, Tom Bergeron is out as the host. Tyra Banks is the new host. Carol Baskin from Tiger King is actually one of the contestants. Well, I mean, they really had dipped to the bottom of the barrel to get Carol Baskin, I feel. I well, guess she's a huge pop culture person. That's what they usually do. Yeah. I mean, uh, and so uh, whether you're a pop culture uh, darling or you're infamous in the world of pop culture, that's kind of what Dancing with the Stars does. Or if you're a B-level, C-level celebrity. I'm trying to see who else is on this. Uh, Monica Aldama. Don't know who she is. Netflix cheer star. Okay, you got that stuff going on. You got Caitlin Bristow. Don't know her. Bachelorette. Oh, there Vernon there. Davis from the NFL. I remember him. All right. And Hesh. I don't know Anne Hesh. The actress? Uh, I feel yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Anne Hesh? Yeah. Oh, wait. Is she, uh, maybe I do know her. Let me you see know her. Face. It's Ellen's, right? Is, is that? Oh, is that how you say No, that's Portia. Is. No, Portia, but no, but Anne Hesh is. The, she I, I, had a relationship with Ellen. That's yes. right. Yes. Okay. Is that how you say her name, Hesh? Oh, okay. I, you know, I think I've been spell- saying your name. Wait, all we call it Hetchy. I think I have. Yeah, <laughs> I think oh, no, I've been telling. Yeah, the only reason yeah. I know that is because I think they said it on Friends once. All right. Well, there you go. Thanks, Sky, thank you, Friends. Sky Jackson from the Disney Channel. Don't know Sky. How about One Day at a Time actress Justina Machado? That's the new One Day at a Time. I think. I guess right? so. Yeah, don't know her either. All right. Jenny Mai, host of the Real. Oh, AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys. Sweet. Okay, uh, here we go. Found someone we know. You got so, Nelly. Okay. Oh, okay. Know that. Jesse Metcalf. Uh, maybe Desperate Housewives. Oh, I probably yeah, I know that. Okay, Charles Oakley. Damn. Okay, basketball player. So we got some. I, yeah. I, we know what forty percent of them. I mean, for the most part. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's okay, leaning more towards thirty. I feel. Hey, Carol Baskin. We've got Neve from Catfish. Who the hell is? He's the host of Catfish. Oh, he's the original he's guy that got Catfish, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know him. I also forgot Chriselle Staus from Selling Sunset. Oh, my wife watches that show all the time. It's pretty cool. So you've got a lot of... And Johnny Weir, Olympic figure skater. Yeah. you got a lot of, I would say, B-level celebrities. How about that? That seems to be what that is. Yeah. You know, they may have been really great at whatever they did, but what they did was probably be level for the And Nelly. Part. Yeah, yeah. And Nelly. And Nelly, yeah. <laughs> I feel like Nelly's above everyone. Else. Well, he was. I mean, what's he done lately, right? It's like, that's that's where you go from A to B, don't you? I guess you're right. Yeah. Sorry, Steve. I know you want Nelly to be A level. I know you do. But Carol Baskin, I think, arguably is pro... Wouldn't you say she might be at the top of the rung for popularity just because of how big Tiger King was and how recent it's been? Carol Baskin's coming. I know her more than any of the other people as far as remembering them. And she's on Dancing with the Stars. But here's the weird thing that happened. Her family, I would say the family of the presumably dead husband, Don Lewis, Carol Baskin's uh, husband, the family of that husband ran an ad during Dancing with the Stars offering a $100,000 reward for information on his disappearance. Again, on the first episode of Dancing with the Stars that Carol Baskin is on. 
I'm Gail, one of Don Lewis's daughters. We are a real family, and to us, he was daddy. I'm Donna. I'm Don Lewis's oldest daughter. We need to know what happened to our father. I'm Ann, Don's former assistant. All we're asking is justice for Don. Don Lewis mysteriously disappeared in 1997. His family deserves answers. They deserve justice. Do you know who did this or if Carol Baskin was involved? The $100,000 reward has been funded. You can call the tip line at 646-450-6530. Or call our office at 800 Litigate. Thank you. I mean, what did I say? Wow. Shots fired? I think that's the that epitome of it. Shots right fired. And a great, of course, a lawyer says, yeah, I'll do this. So only if I get to have a bad piano playing in the background. Of course, you got to have the bad piano. Dude, at first when I started playing it, I'm like, is this an SNL skit? And then, of course, when you hear the sisters, you're like, oh, no, 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 this isn't. This isn't a joke at all for them. Wow. Obviously. This is insane. Because his body's never been found, right? That's the idea is he just went missing and right. we have never. And it was back in what, 19 when? They said 91? Was that was that when it was? I think it was. No. Um, I, 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 I forget when he said 97. 97. Okay. Yeah. So it happened in 97. And then there's parts of during the Tiger King where she's like, I, if I was going to kill somebody, I would have done it this way. And everyone's like, well, you t- just kind of like described how you can make someone disappear by feeding it to a tiger. Yeah. Nice it, going. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what is the truth and what's not, but that is a, that's an interesting flex for them to have. Like, yo. We're going to advertise on the show that she's starring on and make a statement. Yeah, this is... Wow. And, of course, she's getting beaten up all over the internet, uh, Carol Baskin. Oh, she's laughing all the way to the bank, though, man. She's on Cameo making money. She's um, on this stuff, Dancing with the Stars. And what is it? it, Like, OJ... Um, is not doesn't have that same ability to do that or whatever. People really hate him more, and yet it's the same thing, isn't it? Except people really believe OJ did it, even though it's never been proven that he did it. Mm-hmm. And Carol Baskin's never even been taken to court. So, it, but people have a much different response to uh, both. Well, I mean, they both. A lot of people think they're both guilty, but it seems like Carol's at least able to make more bank off of it. Yeah, because I'm almost like she's like this weird punchline for a lot of people. And there was that weird obsession with the Tiger King. And I think that people forget. Like, honestly, dude, like, we all joke about it. Then all of a sudden you see his family and it's just like, oh, yeah, like, this poor family has, like, been dealing with this since 1997. They lost a brother. They lost a relative. And he just disappeared. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue comes, how would you feel if, like, you're his family and Tiger King comes on? And then there's this woman that you've suspected on this show. And granted, not painted in a great light, but still kind of become a celebrity because of it. Yeah. And everyone's now like, that's the running joke about it. And like, yeah, this is a joke for everyone else. But, you know, we lost a family member and we think that she did it. And that's, I think, the oh, man, I don't know what to think about shows like Dancing with the Stars, that they would put her on. Because what if it turns out that she is guilty? You know what I mean? It's like even you know I, I I just feel like I wouldn't put her on. It'd be like, look, I not nothing against you, but we get to choose who's on this show. But if it's possible, you did do this. Do I want to give you fame? Like I'm just not going to take. I, I feel like it's just not. I don't know. It doesn't feel right that she's on that show. If mm-hmm. it's possible, she did this. Yeah, you think about. It, I mean, I don't believe that they would ever even consider putting OJ on it. And yeah, and why you, not? Based on your your you know your analogy of the two, I mean, it's pretty similar in a sense. Like two people that have been yeah. accused of something but haven't been proven to do it yet. Um, yeah, I mean, they would get a lot of talk, but they probably wouldn't want to deal with the negative PR for that. And yet, for some reason, it's okay with Carol Baskin. And granted, I, you know, uh, for whatever reason, uh, OJ. Is, OJ's not very likable. Carol Baskin, I guess, is neutral likable. I mean, I don't know much about her. OJ has been in the... She's just, you know... She's, like, laughable. Like, you you just laugh at how weird she is. Yeah. And OJ just, you know, he just... you know, Plus, he served time in jail for doing other bad stuff. So, maybe that's part of it, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, he had other crimes. Like, one person said, you know, OJ was convicted of multiple other crimes since then. Yeah. Uh, Andy Dick... Now bring him up because he's had issues. And why is he part of this? Because, well, Andy Dick has decided, hey, let me get involved in this crazy world of Joe Exotic. Okay, so I remember what was it? Nicolas Cage is going to be doing some kind of a show. It's like a, a scripted version of Joe Exotic where he's playing Joe Exotic. Yes. And then everyone was talking about how why is he playing Joe Exotic? It should be Andy Dick. So Andy Dick now decided, you know what? You guys are right. I should do a show about Joe Exotic and be Joe Exotic. So he is going to do a Tiger King parody called Tiger Dick. Which doesn't sound right. But, uh, yeah, it's a mockumentary series centering on Andy 
filming an exotic biopic with himself in the lead role and as an unstable version of himself between takes. So he's playing a real character and being a real character. Yeah, he's playing himself, right? He's playing himself, who's had a lot of issues, obviously. A lot of them are substance abuse issues. They're SUD issues. And um, I I, I get that you get to do this, Andy, but you really do have mental health issues. I guess if you want to make fun of it, if maybe it'll do a good thing, I don't know. Wow, I'm looking at a picture of him playing uh, Joe Exotic, and it's, it's pretty funny looking. It's like, yeah, and so, all right, so it's a, it's about, it's, so he's playing a guy like Joe Exotic who's out of his mind, or is he playing Andy Dick as if, if Andy Dick was running a tiger park? I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused. That, no, it kind of seems like what it sounded like. I think he's playing Joe Exotic on a show that's, like, like, and they're breaking the fourth wall, like, okay, and then when the show is done, like, it's almost like a, a, a show about a show. Oh! And so it's Andy Dick playing Joe Exotic, but they're also going to show footage of him just being Andy Dick. Now I get it. Yeah. Oh, that actually is kind of fascinating. Okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm on board with that. Okay. It took me a while. You know, there was a winding road that I was just missing a couple of exits, but you helped me out with that. And it's got the greatest name, Tiger Dick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, the, there's a rumor that an ex-SNL star could make an appearance as his uh, exotics nemesis, Carol Baskin. It better be Will Farrell. Could be. I, you know, I was thinking it was going to be a female star. Uh, I, of course, would love it be, to be Kate McMinnon because she's just uh, McKinnon. She's great. Kate McKinnon is fantastic. But Will Farrell would be funny, too. <laughs> yeah. So um, and the series is now being shopped to places like Netflix. Why wouldn't Netflix pick this up? Uh, unless like, you're like Hulu and you're like, I want some of that Tiger King. Yeah. Rub. And like you said, <laughs> Nicolas Cage is uh, doing a thing for Amazon. And oh man! Oh wait a second! Kate McKinnon is playing Baskin in a rival Tiger King series at NBC. So Kate McKinnon yeah, is already. I, I was just looking up that information. I was trying to confirm oh, it. What you're doing yeah. about this? Okay, so eventually, so BJ, I, you're going to watch the Tiger King spoofs, but never see the Tiger King. I'll that. watch anything with Kate McKinnon. Uh, so I would here. I thinking Kate McKinnon would be a great person to play that, and it turns out she's already playing that in some other show. Yeah. All right. Somebody beat me to that punch. Yeah, I will watch the Kate McKinnon thing. I like Kate McKinnon a lot. I'll watch anything she does. So how pr- how much pressure do you feel if you're the celebrity dance instructor for Carol Baskin? Oh, yeah. Like, if you guys don't do well, are you going to, like, stay away from her and yes, her tiger friends? Because all of a sudden you could go missing. Would you, if you were the dance person, would you say, I wonder how often has it happened, like, a dance instructor, like, they're celebrity dancers, turn down the, the celebrity they're going to be paired with? Oh, good call. You know, like, what if that person, like... Legit's like, no, I don't want her on this show. I'm not going to be her instructor. Like, I wonder how that works. I bet that happens uh, from time to time. They may not like the person for whatever reason. I don't know how many people as controversial as Carol Baskin have been on Dancing with the Stars because I haven't followed it. But well, she's one to put Tanya Harding on Dancing with the Stars. Now, great, she didn't kill anybody, but there was a the whole Nancy Kerrigan thing. You're right, and I could see people not wanting to dance with her. You're right. I wouldn't because I was a Nancy Kerrigan fan, a Massachusetts girl. Oh, you know what? Tanya Harding's dead to me. You know, I feel like... Uh, the Tanya was really the good guy in that whole situation. Oh, I really think that yeah. is that the Tanya? She's not, she's not even Tanya anymore. She's the Tanya? Yeah. The Tanya. The, the Tanya. The, yeah. You really think so? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. What's the matter, Vicky? Yeah. I found uh, Carol Baskin's outfit for dancing, and it is tiger-themed. Oh, of course they put her is. in a tiger-themed dress. Well, wouldn't you? Yeah, I suppose. I'm telling you. They put her in it? No, man. She brought that. Like, yeah. That's probably all she wears. Yeah. Oh, she's got the little flowers in her hair like she always has, too. Oh, she looks like she's not ever... She probably said, hi, all you cool cats and kittens. They they look like they're wearing a giant tiger in the background with fire. I hope they're dancing to hide the tiger. Okay. Tiger with three eyes, because she's, you know... New age. Oh, right, yeah. The third eye. Third eye tiger. Okay. Third eye tiger. I can't do it wow. anymore. I can't even talk. Oh, I, I, you know what? I don't think I want to watch any show. She irritates me. The whole Tiger King thing does. Oh. Now my day is bad. I need another donut. All right. Uh, we got a survey that found the top signs that you are a bad driver. How about you? Are you guilty of being a bad driver? I know I am. I'll tell you all about this at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Get Macy's lowest prices of the season on specials for cooler weather, like cute boots and booties starting at $27.99. And warm new coats for all, 50 to 60% off. And get cafe-style coffee at your fingertips with select Nespresso bundles for only $124.99. Now at Macy's. Plus, get your Macy's order faster when you pick up curbside or in-store. Or try same-day delivery powered by DoorDash. Savings off sale and clearance prices, exclusion supply. 
I need a change. You've been cold to me too many times. You're wasting money. You're a leaker. So I'm replacing you with a new Navian tankless water heater. No more cold shoulders. No more leaks. Just spa-like comfort and Navian peace of mind. And oh, I want you out today. When you're ready for a change, ask your plumber about Navian or visit tanklessmadesimple.com. Count on Navian. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There was a survey out. They said, all right, people. Yes. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to name the top signs that someone is a bad driver. And they came up with the 10 ways you can tell that somebody sucks at driving. See, this is tough because I think there's things that make somebody a bad driver. And then there's some things that just make people suck at driving. Like, I know it sounds weird, but like... Someone who does not, who's driving 60 miles per hour in the passing lane, that might not be necessarily a bad driver, but they mm. just suck at driving. Yeah, they definitely suck. Because they're yeah. slowing everyone down. And then, like, I get it. Like, nobody, like, you want to put your foot down, not on the gas pedal, clearly. But, like, you know, you're like, this person's riding my butt. I'm not going to move over just to spite them. And it's like, well, you know what? Like, there's like 12 cars now waiting to get past you, and you're just slowing it down for everyone. And you are in the wrong, because it's a passing lane, so you right. really shouldn't stay there anyway. So yeah. But it's a speed limit. Yeah, yeah. you're just being a douche. Um, I feel that way sometimes when I'm in the middle, or uh, or if it's a multi-lane freeway, maybe I'm in the third or the second lane, and I am going the speed limit, and mm-hmm. this is, happens in California a lot, where it's just like, the speed limit to them is just, a, they don't even care. You, you know, you're on a major freeway with like six lanes. Just go. Oh yeah, dude, they're insane. It doesn't matter what lane yeah. you're in, you cannot go the speed limit in California. They just get mad at you because you're only going the speed limit even if you're in the furthest lane possible from the fast lane. And, you know, I think that makes somebody a bad driver. I think when you go beyond the speed of what the average speed is on the road. Like, you you know, you have to go with the flow of traffic. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're the person that's going way slow or the person that's going way fast with the flow of traffic, you're a bad driver. What about the crazy weaving people? That's the way fast guy. Yeah. Yeah, I hate Constantly that guy. Just, I mean, it's not like, sometimes it's like, it's clear that we're all stuck in traffic. It's not bumper to bumper, but it's to the point where we're all going maybe 30 miles per hour or 40 miles per hour on the freeway. And they're doing that weaving thing and maybe get four cars ahead of you, but made it in, did, did it in such an aggressive and dangerous way. Yeah. And it's completely I'm not illegal. A fan of those people. Yeah, it's completely illegal. Cops will pull them over because you're not supposed well, to change lanes quickly like that. They need to pull more of them over. I know. I wish. So. I, I, <laughs> personally, that's why I'm in favor of cameras. Put cameras everywhere so that they can record it and then just go find them. Drone cops. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They oh, I love that, that idea. Stuff. That's the start of a really bad sci-fi. Movie. Okay, fine. My favorite is the people that do that and then proceed to give you the middle finger because it was your fault. They oh. wanted to weave in and out. Oh yeah. And wanted to get ahead of you. Yeah. Or when they when they go really fast and try to get in front of you to the light and then you end up like may they you end up at the same red light for a good like five minutes and it's like ah exactly you're right nothing you get you're you're in the same place i'm in jerk that's like the best feeling ever when you just pull up and they probably don't even know that they zoomed past you but like in your head you're like remember me i was six cars ago and now look where we are (laughs) yeah sucker (laughs) yeah the, the, the number one thing on this list is excessive speeding yeah, and I think that the weaving guy is in. Inex- I mean, I, I, th- you know, I've seen excessive speeders do that. They just weave very, very fast between cars, and so I would put that in the same boat. Uh, you know what? When I, I don't know if it bothers you guys as much as it does me, but I just feel like you know, we, you got a cruise control. Maybe you should use it because I, I hate the person that's just like not consistent with their speed. Yeah. Yeah. So all of a sudden, like you're driving, maybe you're like stuck behind them, and they're doing fifty five miles per hour. So you go into the other lane so you can pass them because they're in the passing lane, even though they shouldn't be. You, you're doing now 65. All of a sudden, you want to get around them. Now they're doing 70. And you're like, okay, what are we playing? Some kind of a stupid game? No, that's the person that's texting. I uh, know, 100%. Yes. <laughs> they're, 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 they're looking down, so they slow down. And then all of a sudden, they realize, oh, this car behind me wants to get past me. But I don't want to let that happen. So they speed up again. Or when you're trying to like put your signal. I have a lot of complaints. I drive too <laughs> This is fun, yeah. <laughs> You, have, you know what? We, you, you've talked about tailgating. That's number one. You've talked about cutting people off, the weaving guy, excessive speeding. You've hit the top three. Just you. What else you got? What about the one where you hit your turn signal because you're trying to get over into like another lane and all of a sudden there's plenty of room for you and you, you're like, okay, I got plenty of room. I put my signal on. As soon as you put that signal on, that car that's like 
however far away from you zooms up like speeds up because they realize oh no i can't let this car get in front of me yeah i don't understand that that's the only time where i think my wife hears me curse while driving yeah. i'm like you son of a mother effer and whatever like bumper sticker they have in their car i now hate whatever it is they have their bumper stickering <laughs> like i'm like screw you candle box yeah and wow <laughs> but yeah the box. emails hillary the emails uh, i'm yeah. like I, all of a sudden like i i care sorry about- hillary you would have won the election <laughs> if steve did not get screwed by that guy right that's me the, the, i will now hate anything that you're a fan of if I could have like, screw that person. So Sonic it sounds should like have left town. Sounds like you're number four. I'm what, just way too pissed off? Yeah, constant road rage. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. I feel like after this conversation, you are in a constant state of road rage but that's because the of only, all these other people. That's the only one that leads me to have like a, a road rage where I start cursing and getting mad in my car. Because you could have caused an accident. Yeah. And that's the problem. People don't realize that there, whatever reason, it's like, dude, we got to cooperate on the road. And I, and I, I don't get the fact that look, unless it's a giant truck that's in, that's going to pull in front of you, and you're like, oh, I don't want to look at this the entire road. I, that I can appreciate. I, that, and even then, you got to still be cool because those trucks, man, those are big vehicles. You got to make sure you don't f with them. But otherwise, if any other car gets in front of you, so what? I always hate when somebody speeds up when they realize a truck is trying to get over into a lane. It's such a... Oh, that's a D move. Yeah, because, I mean, that guy or girl, whoever's driving the truck, I mean, it's not as easy for them to to pump no. the brakes and, and slow down. And all of a sudden, you got this person. I, mean, I get it. It sucks that you can now have a car that's potentially going to be driving a lot slower because it's a truck. But, like, anytime I see a truck putting their signal on, I'm slowing down. Let them in. I mean, otherwise, it's just like, it's not worth the... It's not worth the accident. It's not worth the headache. Yeah, I, you've got to be aware. I'm aware. Like, when I see buses and trucks that are on the side or whatever, I, you know, I'm like, ooh, I feel like they're going to pull out soon. You know, I just, my brain goes, I feel like this, the way things are going, this person, I don't know if it's intuition or whatever. And so I immediately give them space. I, I'm like, I, I bet his blinker's coming on right now. And then it does. You feel it. Yeah. I mean, because you can just tell if you really pay attention to driving, you can feel what's about happening on the road. And, True. You, and, and then you can do stuff and be a good driver. This one over here is not using your turn signals. It irritates the crap out of me. Number six. <laughs> That's yeah. New Mexico in a nutshell. Oh. Is it? Oh, California yeah. They don't, too. Even, they don't know what turn signals are at all. Is it the around. Southwest maybe? Is that what it is? Because California, maybe. same problem. It's for, a, for the most part, I see people around here are using their turn signals. Well, we're, nor- we're Pacific Northwest. We're better than not everybody else down there. <laughs> That's why. I like to think we're better. I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Steve. I think we do a pretty good job around here. But, man, uh, Danny's talking about well, New Mexico. I'm down in California visiting a lot. And these are the same high-speed freak shows, also with split lanes for motorcycles. And you're not using directionals? Are you out of your mind? The only one's kind of funny. It's not a big deal. But, like, when you're trying to, like, leave, like, a parking lot of, like, a store... And you know you're waiting for all these cars to pass, and then a person that starts turning into the same parking lot. And you're like, man, if you would have put your signal on, I would have known I could get out of this parking lot. And like you know, because you're waiting, and then by that point, then all the other car, I'm just hitting microphones. I'm just hey, about this, hey, how you doing? How about this texture? The the freaking brake tapper. Oh, yeah. I don't see that in the top 10, uh, the freaking brake tapper. I don't see that. Some of these, I think, are interesting because we've talked about, look, the big ones, you know, speeding, cutting people off, tailgating, constant road rage. Number five is using your horn too much, which is interesting because, I mean, when you live in the Northeast, your horn is just a method of communication. It's It was the way before cell phones. That was the way to let somebody know you're outside of their home and you want to pick them up. <laughs> you would honk the horn. Now it's considered a microaggression. I mean, really, really, no, it really is. If you beep at the people the wrong way, you can be cited in, in our state. It is funny. There are times where you want to give like that. Just that little like little like tap yeah, of a, a horn yeah. just because you could tell the person in front of you is on their phone and they didn't realize the light went green. But you don't want to be aggressive with it and lay your horn. But sometimes you hit the horn a little too hard and you're like, oh, man. Yeah, you're that guy. Like, uh, no, nah, how do I let them know that I'm not really mad? I was just trying to look out for them. <laughs> I know. I, I, I wish we could come up with a signal that nobody would be pissed off at to say, look, you you have to know if you're looking at your phone, you can't be mad at me when I tell you you're looking at your phone and we're waiting. You, they know, need, they, you know what they need? They need a wife like mine who is like apparently staring at the stoplight, waiting for it to turn. Because if I don't start moving once it turns green, I hear her go, go. And I'm like, are you just staring at the light? Like yeah. it just turned green and you're already telling me to go. I have people like that in my life. It's good. And I'm also that person when I'm the passenger. So I think because you get distracted, especially if there's people in the car, which, by the way, this is number eight. And this is me. I need to be better at this. Back to Ta- driving. Uh, no, talking to too much, talking too much while you drive huh. to the passenger, oh. to the passenger. 
I get lost. I miss exits. Everything. Yeah. I don't even hear <laughs> the person. Like, I don't hear Google Assistant telling oh, me which geez. way to go. That's I'm, actually really true. The first time that I ever came to Seattle, BJ took me over to West Seattle to see <laughs> if I liked it. And all of a sudden, he misses the bridge. And we are, like, in Soto. And he's like, I don't know. There's supposed to be a bridge here somewhere. Wow. That he had been talking the whole time. <laughs> uh, you were here. You missed the bridge. Now we're in the water. and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Danny, see, I, that's why I have to admit it, because I know it's happened, and not just with you, it's happened with a lot of people. I tell folks, if you want to have a conversation with me, you need to drive. Otherwise, we're never going to get where we need to go. I had an Uber driver once where they were driving me to my place, and they kept talking and talking. I didn't mind it. Like, it was like, oh, this makes sense. The ride goes coming back some, somewhere. And But like he kept missing all the exits because he kept talking. And then he's like, his GPS was saying it, and I'm watching him. Like, finally, I'm like, hey, man. You're missing all the exits. It's like, oh, please don't give me a bad rating. I'm like, I'm not going to give you a bad rating, but how about we just listen for the exits? Yeah. That's the <laughs> By the way, I just told him where to go because I'm like, I know where I'm going, but you don't want to be that backstreet driver person. Yeah, you just got to know as a driver, when you talk too much, it distracts yourself. All right, here's a good one. It has nothing to do with being a bad driver, but just with driving because like you said, you know, some people, like when you're on the freeway, like, I like using cruise control. That way I'm not being that weird like you know i go from 55 to 75 like i don't know what speed i'm going what's your desired cruise control speed because one texter brought up one and it's exactly mine as well i it, well it's illegal okay you r- rule breaker well it is Hold on, but let me play this while you tell us then yeah well it's nice. it's illegal usually i mean there are some places where it's not but what i notice is the best cruising speed on a freeway is 70 I mean, that's what people go. I mean, oh, that's only when I'm around schools. That's yeah. what I do. Seven. Yeah. I mean, Duh. I mean, seventy is what everybody goes when there's not, not traffic. What do you go? Come on, BJ. Oh, come on, dude. It's so true, though. Oh, I set my cruise control. I'm an idiot. Of course, I should know it. <laughs> to the nicest speed. There we go. In all the land. As one Texas says, Steve, I set my cruise control to sixty nine. Nice. Uh, one six seven, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. And when I don't, and I'm driving, I look down and see how fast am I going. And I see it says sixty nine. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> like man, I should do that. Zone. I should do that for you from now on because it's very close to what I do when I want to put the cruise control on. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, because you know they always say like when you. I've had actually a cop tell me once when he pulled me over, even though he pulled me over for only going five miles over the speed limit. And then messed with my head when I think he was just doing it just to screw with me. He's like, you know, typically if you're like 10 or under on the speed limit, we're not going to pull you over. Well, then what happened typically? I didn't want to even bother to ask. I That's was like, this the is lamest some kind thing of, in the world. You I were think, going five over and he goes, typically. But I was like, I was already in the wrong. I don't feel like having more money dinged out of my, get, you know, get worse on a ticket because I'm all of a sudden questioning this guy. I, I was like, is this some kind of like super troopers game you're playing with me? In my head, I'm thinking this. Yeah, because I would have said something and got more of a ticketed. It wasn't worth it. But typically what I always go with is 69 because yeah. it's nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't know. Uh, I'm very disappointed. I know. I didn't. Well, you know what? I forgot. That should be yours. Yeah. Is that Vicky's too? Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Danny? Because it's under 10. Yeah. I, mean, I Probably 69 as well, actually. Okay. That's what's up, BJ. That's what nice. Rev does it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Look I'm at you. Bad. You're you're the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the bad boy going 70. <laughs> like, like, oh, I don't want to say because I'm breaking the law. Yeah. <laughs> Because I, well, I know. I mean, I want to be responsible. I'm, I, you know, I'm a duly deputized broadcaster here. I have to be responsible. So it's said 69, baby, from Nora and Polsbo. Yeah. Okay. That'll be my new one. And like, it, apparently, you guys say it's it's under the ten the, the ten mile an hour threshold. So why not? This person says my speedometer says 71, but really, I'm going 69. So I always have to have it at 71. <laughs> I have no idea what that even means. <laughs> He's just adjusting. It's just a little off. He realizes that his, his uh, speedometer is wrong. Ah, okay. So for some reason, his speedometer is two miles per hour faster than it really is. How does he even know that? Maybe we went by one of those signs that says you're going this amount of speed. Oh. And there's some apps that will tell you how fast you're going. Oh, like right. Waze will tell you. Oh, there you go. Okay, he's got it. When you um, go by those like little speed things, you know, when it says like what your speed is. Yeah. Do you guys try your best to hit that number exactly? Yes. yes. Yeah, me oh, too. So no, I just try to go. I may try to make it blink red. <laughs> oh, and yell you, you want to stop? Slow yeah. down. Oh, you want to be in, in the piss mode. There, there is the hey, watch out mode. Yeah. Good job mode. Then there's a what the f is wrong with yeah. you mode. Yeah. Fine. Those signs work like a charm for me. Like there's a part in Gig Harbor where I'm going down the hill towards like where the water is, and they have one of those. And because you're just going down a hill, you lose track. You're like. I'm just going. I'm zooming. I don't feel like I'm going super fast. All of a sudden, red light. Slow down. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Robot. Like, yeah. Sorry, yeah. robot. Yeah, it does the same to me, too. It's like, oh, damn, they're mad at me now. 
Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. Which is the main substance used to make a crayon? Chalk. No. Glue. No. Horse. No. You know, the that's answer, glue. That's a second, uh, second question that has wax as an answer. We have earwax today. Yesterday was wax. Rob, are you going to keep that going? I guess. Now I have uh, to, right? All right. We'll see what tomorrow brings for us. <laughs> you want a shot at BDC? You got a 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs. We'll do that at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. How long is a bankruptcy going to affect my credit rating? Of course, most of the time, by the time we're, we're talking about filing a bankruptcy, the credit has already taken a huge hit. Uh, chapter 7 is going to affect it more negatively than Chapter 13. Uh, chapter 7 stays on your credit report for 10 years from the time you file. It usually takes 7 or 8 years for your credit scores to get back into the normal range in a Chapter 7 case. However, your credit will start to recover even in Chapter 7 after about a year. Um, you'll be able to get credit again right away, usually before I, your case is even over. Uh, chapter 13 stays on your credit report for seven years and usually takes about three or three and a half years for your credit to get back in the normal range. So chapter 13 uh, will mean your credit gets better much more rapidly. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. For the last 75 seasons, the NBA has been getting greater. It's been crossing over. Crossing borders, bending minds, breaking barriers, and shattering expectations. Because if the league's taught us one thing, it's that we can't predict anything. So don't miss one minute of the 75th anniversary season, where greatness lives on in every game. Visit NBA.com slash 75 to learn more.